The podcast you are listening to of Holmberg's Morning Sickness is brought to you by my friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat. Trust me on this one. You've had barbecue before, but you haven't had it this good. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Eric'sFamilyBBQ.com. When was the last time you had really good Texas-style barbecue? Eric's Family Barbecue, the way it's supposed to taste. Always delicious, never rushed, and prepared to perfection. Eric's Family Barbecue uses only 100% fresh meat, slowly smoked over mesquite wood until it's juicy and delicious. We all know their brisket is the best, but have you tried their pulled pork, pork ribs, or rib tips? Amazing, and their sides are all house-made. Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meat, mesquite, repeat. Make the trip. You won't be so Sorry, go to ericsfamilybbq.com for more information. Still streaming. Holmberg's Morning Sickness. Online at 98kupd.com. I just, my day just got a thousand times better as Gretchen the German Shepherd is now here. Candace the Hero downstairs has adopted Gretchen uh, from... Uh, Lost their home pet rescue, which is, I'm just happy. There's so many of those dogs we've done, and people say, oh, you did this. I didn't do anything. I just do a video with a dog that's already been treated and cared for brilliantly by the Lost Our Home uh, folks. And then this one hit with Candace. And look at that dog. Isn't he beautiful? Look at that. Beautiful He's got a great girl, right? gait, too. She's gorgeous. Walk. Yeah, German Shepherds that have that walk, they walk like their feet are wet. And they just look great. She's gorgeous. So nice job, Candace. Uh, Brady, there's no reason to mention that the old owner used to jerk off all the time. The dog is just uh, yes, loving its go. life. Doesn't need to be reminded that uh, it's, its late father is a masturbation machine in Brady's mind. Hopefully that lady's not listening right now. <laughs> if you were listening earlier, you know what I'm talking about. Brady eulogized that dog's former owner uh, by passing the time saying he jerked off a lot. Uh, before we get to the episode, no, it's not lies. <laughs> it isn't lies. It's fact. You have to accept your timing was poor, and we made it better. Uh, this person says, uh, Dear John, do you worry about using the voice you used for Tessica Brown? You're the last one with the courage to do that kind of thing. How do you get away with it? I figured black people would try to cancel you just for doing her voice that way. You know, the claim to flame and all that. Right. Here's what I say about that. Like I've always said, the leading cause of racism is race. If you say it, we're all one thing. This race is all one thing and everything we represent is homogenized and singular – then you're going to have problems. If any black people want Tessica Brown to represent the entire race of black people, I think you're foolish. I think that's ridiculous. <laughs> I don't think she should represent humanity in any sort of way, let alone an entire race of people. So I think giving her kind of a, a dopey street voice is okay. I think representing Tessica in a poor, a bad light is not a bad thing. Because we should not be saying she's representative of any race or any part of humanity. She needs to be put aside. We should ignore her. But that song, I tell you what, that is nearly impossible to ignore. Yeah. Right, you know. That's what's great. Oh, there she goes again. Anybody who gorilla glues their head down gets a dumb voice for me. I'm fine with that. <laughs> and anybody that goes, uh, how dare you make fun of black people? I was not making fun of black people. I was making fun of that lady. Yeah. And I don't think anybody's going to step up in her defense in such a way that's going to be troublesome for me. There might be a couple of people that like that song. Now, if I'm ever on TV, no, there aren't. And, and those are people you don't want to deal with either. They are not representative of any race because you don't want them to. They are not qualified to lead a Girl Scout troop, let alone an entire race of people. Uh, and if I'm ever in trouble for this... And I have to sit next to Reverend Jared Moffat, and the NAACP is mad at me for making fun of Tessica Brown, and the cameras are there. And uh, they say, John, do you have anything to say? I'm like, no, uh, what's going on around here is we got us a problem in town now. I'm here to sort all that out. Or I'll just go, you big dummies, I was making fun of her. That's the way it is, you big dummy. Yeah, I don't know that we should have individuals representing entire races. That's dangerous. We've kind of gotten lost in that whole thing. Can we get back to thinking like I do? All races are bad and most people are stupid. Let's make fun of that. <laughs> I think it was a better world. When we all kind of thought, boy, everybody's sort of dumb. Instead of everybody being an individual superstar. Look what it leads to. Gorilla Glue Lady thinks she's a rap star. For no reason at all. She's going for it, man. She's going for it, all right. Remember when you used to have to work to do that? Not glue your head to your head? 
Remember that? Remember those days? Actually had to, you know, work on your craft. What if she's worked on this craft for a year? Brady, have you heard the song? She hasn't worked on anything for more than 20 minutes. She worked harder on getting the glue out of her hair. I'm not, you know, got a point. No, I'm strong. You're trying to be contradictory because you're, you're afraid. You need to stand on my side on this one. See, now he, now he bat, rats get bats. I'd rather have him rat than be indecisive and try to undermine me. If you're if you're on her side, I want you out. I don't want the Pollyanna. Going on the road. I don't want the Tessica. I don't want the Pollyanna view of some people might like it. Well, those are people that also need to jump off the planet. If you ever were talking to anybody, have you heard the new Tessica Brown My Hair song? Can't stop dancing. Change my life. Yeah. Guess what? I'm going to change my channel. Click. You're gone. You're no longer in my world. <laughs> Dear Tessica, <laughs> when I heard your song, yeah. yeah. I realized I didn't want to live anymore. It just stuck with me. Yeah, terrible. So I used to like when we had to keep her for fame. Uh, the we don't lyrics are even on here. Oh, you have shouting out to her, her doctor and everything else. And yeah. Can't it's you a just, dedication song. Yeah. Can't oh, yeah. You, she just make a phone call that says, thanks for ungluing myself for myself. You hear what I'm telling you? And oh, my scalp was burning. It was concerning. Man, I felt the burning. So I saw it went viral. My daughter Gina and all oh, Amelia views just because she like Mama. You a star? Oh Didn't no! <laughs> See, she even mentions that this made her a celebrity. Mama, you a star? You're not a star. You're a laughing stock. Oh my God! No one knows the difference anymore. They don't move my hair. You a million she clicks? Even, she even thanks her doctors and yeah, stuff in here. A million clicks. A million views. For being stupid doesn't make you famous. It makes you infamous. Look it up. My hair. It don't move. It don't Three days later, Gina came to me to say the glue could get removed by Dr. Michael K. Obang. <laughs> yes. <laughs> they want to ask what the fee is. She said the fee is free. The fee is free. <laughs> you a superstar. All right, everybody. Clear out the emergency room. Gorilla Glue Lady is here. We can't have people having strokes and people in comas getting in the way of us fixing Gorilla Glue. Oh, look at this. It's Beverly Hillbillies. Now I'm L.A. bound. Palm so trees still down. She doesn't know the difference between laughing stock and faint. Then I met the doctor. Felt relief more than I ever did. Surgery took a minute. Four hours. I had my curls again. Big shot to Dr. Michael K. Bang, And I swear that I would never touch Gorilla Glue again. twice. Yeah. That's like what you do, Brady. She uh, she got free hair service and then mentioned him in her big hit song. She gave a Brady's Morning Cup shout Wait out. Wait for the Mondays, my griddle. Brady and Tessica. My griddle, my griddle, my griddle. That's my griddle, my griddle, my griddle. <laughs> Barbecue Island in the house. Pacific palm trees griddle, clean it out. Now I'm in the backyard making pancakes. Kirby is about to have breakfast. That's great stuff, old man. Now start pouring that batter. Batter, my batter, my batter's on the griddle. Everything. But you know what? You have proven that you are entertaining. You have worked for years and years to get to where you are. You did not glue your head to something and then think, wow, a lot of people liked when I did that. I'm a, I'm a star. I'm George Clooney. Her daughter made her realize that. I stapled my face to a magazine on the, and people like clicked all. Can you imagine that? It's because I'm a superstar. I'm in. How long is this thing? No, I just got it on repeat. Oh, okay. I was going to say. It's like more lyrics. You said it was like two minutes. Yeah, it's like two minutes and 46 seconds, (laughs) which is about two minutes and 46 seconds too long. How do you get away with this, John? How are you not. How do people not get mad about it? Well, I'll tell you exactly how. That lady represents no one on the planet normal. So she's free to be made fun of in every possible way. Respectfully, of course. Let's not use curses and call names. Let's just call her what she is, untalented and undeserving. A poet. Of She's so big not getting a through. Poet. And my hair, it won't move. <laughs> won't move. <laughs> my hair, it don't move. It don't move. What okay. The- she's, she's celebrating it. That's like Rudy Giuliani doing 9-11 with the best day. Couldn't have a better day than 9-11 for me. He's kicking himself. <laughs> He should have rapped about how he would. That's when he was good. But again, he had skills at that point. I just don't get it. <laughs> Hair went from silky to solid. Tried to wash it out with everything I think of, but nothing was making progress. So I was sobbing. What do I do? 
Okay, I can't. Brett, turn it all off. Right, all right, all right, Jessica is taking up enough of our time. <laughs> we're giving her too much, but at least we're a fool of her. Oh, she did that on her own. She did it way before this wrap. Yeah. I just can't believe that. I just can't believe that she doesn't grasp infamy versus fame. Famous and infamous. There's two words for a reason. It's crazy. Anyway, Brady, it's time for the entertainment drill. I don't even know if there's any stars left at all. The world is just full of lunatics. Uh, it's brought to you by our friends at reactdefense.com, the home of tactical black self-defense training. Head on up there. Uh, like I said, my friend Mike, uh, uh, you know him, Haley. He's the one who emailed about his wrestler, uh, his nephew or his, I don't remember who it was, his nephew or whatever, but he had NCAA champion, all this stuff. And he's like, he's got all the skills in the world, just no street skills. I don't know that he'd win a street fight because he'd have to get into wrestling poses. And uh, that With is a not. full Nelson. Yeah, that's not how that works. That is not how the street fights work. Sure, it can help you if you know a couple moves, but, uh, you know, there's ear biting. And there's uh, eye poking and everything else in street fighting. There's all sorts of stuff a bad guy will do to you that you're like, hey, wait a minute. Those are against the rules. There are no rules. I boxed. Learned very quickly that a guy who wants to beat me up will kick my ass around boxing really fast. I can throw a punch. I better land it first because his intentions are different than mine. I've got Marcus of Queensberry rules in my head. Uh, street fighting and, uh, and uh, sport fighting are totally different. Although, if you got a little under your belt, it's not a bad idea. Say, hey, you know what? I'm a little athletic. Let's see what else I can do. And you'll get in great shape doing it. Plus, for the holidays, those gift cards are amazing. That's what Haley took advantage of. Got it for his, I think, nephew. Uh, someone in his family. I know that. Uh, and it's uh, great because you get one right now. You get a month of free training with the gift certificate purchase. So it's pretty great. Put that in the stocking. A great stocking stuffer. And you don't have to worry about the delivery not showing up because of the supply chain thing. It's a service. And goods and services are different services available right now. Goods, eh, you never know. Could get caught up in some port in Long Beach, and then you don't have Christmas at all. So get yourself a gift card right now and get the gift of Tactical Black for that someone you love this holiday season. Phoenix Glendale Chandler, it's reactdefense.com, the home of Tactical Black, Brady Entertainment. If you could attend a celebrity holiday party. Tessica Brown. Whose would it be? Tessica Brown? Yep. Well, Samsonite, the luggage company, <laughs> wants to put her surveyed 2,000 people. <laughs> 73% of them said they'd love to attend an A-lister's party. And the most popular choice was The Rock. To go to his 38%. Christmas party. 38%. Yeah. Then fo- followed uh, by Will Smith, Lady Gaga. I think I'd have to go with like... Uh, and Betty White was for Ah, oh, that'd be a good one. I'd go to Betty White's Christmas because it might be the last one. And if you could go to somebody's house, a celebrity's house for Thanksgiving, number one choice was uh, Tom Hanks and Rita Wilson. Jessica Brown didn't make the list? No, I know. That's I amazing. This is yeah. unbelievable. I go well, to Tom Hanks for Thanksgiving. She didn't have their song out. That's right. Oh, okay. All right. I go to Tom Hanks for Thanksgiving because his name is T. Hanks. Thanks. Thanksgiving. T. Hope Hanks. Gordy Hahn and Kurt Russell were second. Huh. Who would you choose? Don't say Guy Fieri. I'll kill you. Who's, who's Thanksgiving or Christmas party would you want to go to? Hmm. Thanks and Rita wouldn't be bad. That'd be pretty cool. Tom Hanks? Yeah. That's not so bad. For Thanksgiving, for Christmas, do you have one? For Christmas? Um, I'd go over to uh, Elon Musk's. Uh, <laughs> Just yeah. hope for presents? Yeah. Maybe <laughs> I'd get a nice not battery a of some plan sort. Not there. Yeah. With four wheels. Brett, you, of course, would choose De Niro or Pesci? Uh, I was going to go Pesci or Pacino, actually. But, uh, yeah. Mom? Or the Stallones. Oh, that's just yeah, Frank or, or Sly, Frank's you know, I mean, that's the Frank. way to do it. <laughs> that's the one to do. What about you, Mo? Get, you have your mask on because of me? Yes. Come on. <laughs> you can't yes. do the squares with the mask on. I brought like 12 extra. Yeah. Just Layered. <laughs> you didn't. All right. I want, are you in, are you vaccinated? Yes. Of course you are. I'm still nervous. I don't want to get sick. For some event. You're all right. I just I'm thought fine. of another one for the You holidays. could get sick all day. You're fine. The microphone's in this room. I'm the least of your concerns. Are you kidding? Who's your other one, Brady? Blazarians. I can't hear you, so you That'd can't. That'd be a good one. Oh, Blazarians. What is your? Who is yours? Either one. Oh, Thanksgiving, yeah. Christmas, oh, yeah. Phantom- any day. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, be quiet. Phantom of the Gay Station's about to talk. Oh, right. God dang! I can't hear you. God, I don't know. I, I don't know what you're saying. I don't. I don't I, what? No. Kristen Stewart is her answer. Shut <laughs> <up>. <laughs> it's true. I don't know. I have an answer either. I think just Kylie and Travis, because now they got demons. <laughs> That'd be sad. Thanksgiving. Nah, nah. Was a tough time. Give thanks at all. The, there's like, look at the silver lining. Yeah. Like fifty thousand people lived. Yeah. I mean, come on. We had a celebrity death. 
Dave Frischberg, jazz musician. I got nothing on that. 88 one. years old. He was the guy that wrote, I'm Just a Bill for Schoolhouse Rock. I'm Just a oh. Bill. Yes, I'm only a bill. And I'm sitting here on Capitol Hill. Well, it's a long, long journey to the Capitol City. Yep. Um, Mike Tyson's former chauffeur is writing a book and a uh, little part of it. Talks about uh, his name's Rudy Gonzalez. He talked about how Tyson would prep before fights. Sometimes it was with uh, hookers. Sometimes it was with um, bringing the women in. Drugs. You'd have sex before a fight, yeah. right before the fight. He was adamant about breaking that boxing tradition, which was no sex during training, because they say it makes your legs weak and it makes your mind weak. Yeah, and and Mike Tyson kind of proved that maybe you can still be strong. If you just drained your nuts before a fight. Tyson would have sex with women in the dressing room before a fight in order to reduce his potency. He said he, uh, he, since he was having sex, it would take the killer, the legit killer instinct out. Mellow him out for the fight. Yeah. So I don't destroy the man. And eat his children. When he won the heavyweight championship, he had gonorrhea so bad. Uh, One of the reasons he wanted to end it in the first round is because he was having so much pain in his penis. He had such a horrible STD that when he fought, uh, I can't remember who it was. It was a guy who, the last guy to fight Ali was the guy he took the title from. Uh, and now the name, I'm blanking on the name and I can picture his face, but uh, was it Broderick Thomas? I don't remember. Anyway. Uh, You'll be excited about great, this, John. Great story. Cause I, had, I had STD so bad that when I tried to go in there, I was, my, it just, my dick hurt so bad I just had to punish that man and get back to the dressing room and take my, uh, my shots. He had to get the penicillin. <laughs> When I have five seconds to go kill this guy and then come back and get a shot? I mean, <laughs> yeah. I'll do that. Martin Scorsese is directing a movie about the Grateful Dead. Brett's in line. Yeah, I'm Jonah in, Hill will and play Jerry Garcia. And it's a terrible uh, subject, but it's Scorsese, so why wouldn't we go? <laughs> I, I was going to say yeah. De Niro should probably be playing uh, Jerry know. Garcia. This touch of gray. He'll pick anything. He'll touch of gray, huh? He'll be in it somehow. Yeah. Oh, yeah. How you doing? I'm Bob Weir. <laughs> Bob Weir, anybody got any questions? Huh? Huh? That could actually work. Think though. I'm not Bob Weir? I'm Bob Weir today. We're going to do a little CGI, make us look like we're 20. Oh, oh, we're the Grateful Dead. Oh. Billie Eilish is making her Saturday Night Live hosting oh. debut on December 11th. She's going to host and sing. Yep. Well, she's, uh, yeah, she's doing the double duty there. Paul Rudd will host December 18th. We got to do that for the squares. Pesci and De Niro as the Grateful Dead. Oh, Pull geez. up some songs. <laughs> Casey Driving Jones. KP, Casey Jones. Watch your speed. Keep an eye on that. I don't uh, know any of the other songs. What else did they sing? Touch of Grey is about it. Touch of Grey is the only one I liked. You're probably, they do trucking you or something grateful? like that? Oh, yeah. Trucking. Yeah. Trucking. trucking. <laughs> Get the f*** out of the way, we're trucking. Listen. <laughs> Let's see here. Gray, friend of you know, the we devil. Few, we'll get a few of those. Trucking. Out. You're probably a Grateful Dead fan. That's something you would like. Mo, I can't hear you. Oh, my God. No. Ma- huh? <gasps> you just pulled the mask down. <gasps> We've all got it. Oh, my God. We've all got it. What if I pull the microphone? You know what, really? That mask is only protecting me from you. Good. Okay. Something to check out tonight um, on Hulu, I believe on FX and Hulu, um, is the malfunction, the dressing down of Janet Jackson. Basically, it uh, is a documentary about the 2004 Super Bowl deal, the wardrobe malfunction, that both she and Justin Timberlake were canceled by Les Moonves, CBS. He uh, just, they both came out and publicly apologized, but Les said, until they come to me personally, um, they're banning him from the Grammys that year. Justin went to his office and uh, sat down with Les and apologized. Janet did not. He let Justin into the Grammys. Justin Ooh. got a couple of awards. Janet never and and done. still hasn't. Yeah, and Whoa. she. But on the flip side of that, she hasn't put anything good out right. in that amount of time. The Grammys though. needed I mean, Justin. Shut your mouth. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> the That's Grammys true. needed Justin, and Janet was only good for the uh, retrospective lifetime achievement award that they were eventually going to give her. She didn't. So nothing. it'll be interesting. I'm curious to see. I'm sure. You know, it's her version. Well, if she did the PR stunt, if she didn't, that's uh, a, yeah, all of course I mean, that's it was. all it is. It was a Velcro yeah, who strap. cares? She had a pasty on her nipple. Yeah, enough but, said. We don't need an hour know. explanation yeah. of it. Well, there yeah. is a, one part of it where he tried to he used Gorilla Glue. Oh my God, <laughs> my nipple, my nipple, it showed through. Oh yeah, <laughs> don't do it, don't do it. Have you heard the song yet, Mo? 
Tessica Brown's My Hair, the Gorilla Glue Lady. You guys will be playing this on KDKB because you play crap. <laughs> that station stinks. <laughs> Anywho, you're nice, but the music is just intolerable. You need to... You absolutely Throw it in, Mo. Just yeah, toss in the towel. This yeah. fight is over. Your fighter is getting hurt. <laughs> <laughs> Look at the ratings. You guys should not be in the ring. I give it to you. You're still on your feet. I don't know how that's happening. You know when Rocky in the 14th round against Paul, like, how's he still standing punch. up? Man, can you guys have it? You have a chin. Usually balls are hitting it, but you have a chin. <laughs> anyway, Moe's here from KDKB to help us out. We haven't done the square. We got to write those squares. Toledo better be in there doing something. Uh, the Guadalupe squares are coming up in just moments. We need a girl. We need a boy. 585-9800. We'll do those squares next. It's 98. 98. What? 98. No way. You've been listening to Holmberg's Morning Sickness Podcast, brought to you by our friends at Eric's Family Barbecue in Avondale. Meet, mesquite, repeat, ericsfamilybbq.com.